As we approach Easter, one of the things I've been thinking about is whether we can prove that Jesus really rose from the dead. And I suppose it kind of depends what you mean by prove, because proof in its truest sense only really exists in the realm of math. So I can obviously 100% prove to you that one plus one equals two. But even scientists need to employ a certain amount of faith. So when they do science, they need to believe that there is a certain order to the world, uh, that when they do things, they'll react in a certain way because forces like gravity are in play. In a similar way, we also um, can't prove lots of things that we rely on on a daily basis. So you can't 100% prove that your mum loves you. There might be lots of evidence for it, but you can't 100% prove it. You also can't prove that the sun's gonna rise tomorrow. You might be able to look back and say, well, it rose yesterday, but you can't prove that it's gonna rise tomorrow. And you also can't prove that like the school bus is gonna get you to school without breaking down. But I think what we can do with the area of science and with these things that we sort of rely on every day is we have proof in the sense of a law court. So I don't know whether you've heard that phrase that lawyers use quite a lot, proof beyond reasonable doubt. Again, they can't mathematically 100% prove that someone has or hasn't done the crime. But what they can do is build up a case based on eyewitness testimony, confession, and other types of evidence. And I think that's the sort of proof that we're talking about when we're looking at whether Jesus rose from the dead. But if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then we need to find another alternative to explain the empty tomb, the fact that no one's ever found his body. And here are a few alternatives. Well, maybe Jesus didn't die. Maybe he got into the tomb, the corners of the tomb kind of revived him and he walked out of the tomb. But I think the problem with that is even the word itself, crucifixion, um, the, the word that we use to describe kind of the most excruciating pain, which is like the worst pain you can possibly have, that word excruciating comes from the Latin word to crucify, because crucifixion was known as the most brutal form of death and torture. But even before Jesus was crucified, he had a crown of thorns pressed into his head. He was whipped with something called a flagrum, which was um, a whip of leather with pieces of bone and metal, which would have torn into his flesh and ripped pieces of his flesh off. So he was in a bad way before he was even crucified. And then if we look at um, John's gospel, one of the gospel accounts, it talks about the fact that a spear was thrust into Jesus's side and out came water and blood, which is actually a sign of severe blood clotting in the arteries which points to heart failure which obviously ultimately leads to death so perhaps Jesus's body was stolen I mean maybe it was stolen by the disciples but the problem we have here is the people that were put in charge of guarding tombs of guarding dead bodies so that people didn't steal the bodies were Roman soldiers and apparently these guys were even more hardcore than marines and you've got to think about whether the Jesus's disciples would have been able to overpower these guys. Jesus's disciples who would have been in mourning, therefore probably not eating properly, properly and weak, would they have been able to over overthrow the Roman soldiers in order to get the body out? Even if that was the case, I think something that's even more significant that we've got to think about is the fact that most of these disciples went on to be killed for their faith. Would they have died for something that they knew was a lie? I know I wouldn't. So maybe it wasn't the disciples that stole the body. Maybe it was the Roman or the Jewish authorities. But I think the problem you've got with this is they were trying to disprove that Jesus had risen from the dead. They were adamant that he hadn't risen from the dead. And if they had his dead body, why would they not have wheeled it out to prove that he hadn't risen from the dead? So perhaps it wasn't the disciples that stole the body or the authorities that stole the body. Maybe it was tomb robbers. And this on first glance might be the most realistic option. But then you look a bit further into it and you see that what's left in the tomb is the expensive spices and the grave clothes that would have been used to embalm the body to stop it stinking when it had been rotting away for a few days. And what they took instead was a body that would have been worth nothing. So I don't think they would have stolen it either. So perhaps the people that claim to have seen the risen Jesus, maybe they were hallucinating. Again, there's a problem with this, and that is that psychologists will talk about the fact that people who have hallucinations are often people with vivid imaginations. And actually, a lot of the disciples don't fit this description. Just as a small example, you've got Matthew, who was a shrewd tax collector. You've got Peter, who was a tough fisherman. And then you've got Thomas, who's pretty much a born skeptic, born to not believe this stuff.
the other thing with hallucinations is there's no such thing as a collective hallucination you don't have a group of people all hallucinating the same thing they might have different hallucinations but not all hallucinating the same thing and we hear stories of groups of people believing that they saw the risen Jesus and in 1 Corinthians 15 you see a group of 500 people claiming to have seen the risen Jesus that couldn't have been a hallucination the final thing about hallucinations is they tend to be of expected events you know we hallucinate something that we kind of anticipate happening and actually the Jesus, the Jewish concept of resurrection of people rising from the dead was so unlike what happened to Jesus that it wouldn't have been an anticipated event the disciples would have been just as surprised about Jesus rising from the dead as we are so maybe they weren't hallucinating but maybe those people who claim to have seen the risen Jesus maybe they were lying I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of kind of fake news stories about celebrities recently. And what you see is that the celebrity doing everything they can to then inform the public that actually it's not true. They're on social media kind of demeaning the story and saying it's not true. They're, they're putting out their own story saying this is actually what happened. And um, I think exactly the same would have happened back then if Paul, who's sort of writing in the New Testament, if he had written a false account or if people were saying things that weren't true, then actually people who were there at the time would have jumped in to say that's not true. And what I think again is really significant in 1 Corinthians 15, which um, is a letter that Paul has written, he name checks individuals who claim to have seen the, the risen Jesus. And he even says most of them are still around, as if to say, go and ask them. If you don't believe me, go and ask them what happened and I think the fact that he's name checking them says look go and look at the sources yourself and see if you think it's true so they're kind of the other alternatives and I think when we're thinking about this stuff we've got to think what is the best way to explain the hundreds of people who claim to have seen the risen Jesus what is the best way to explain the fact that the disciples went from being pretty terrified and a bit useless to being fearless and going on to give their lives for this cause and what is the best way to explain this incredible sudden growth of the early church and I think actually the best way to explain that with no other convincing alternative I don't think is the resurrection the fact that Jesus rose from the dead and that may sound completely far-fetched but actually it's a little bit like what Sherlock Holmes says when you've eliminated the impossible whatever remains however improbable must be the truth <laughs>